Hola, buenos dias. Things will need a moment to settle, I am sure. It's a great privilege, privilege to be here. It's my first time at the South uh, Summit. I'm very much enjoying the conversations I'm already having, looking forward to many uh, more. So my set question is multiply of effects uh, and in relation to businesses. But I'm also going to talk about markets because I think very often we focus too much on individual businesses and their supply chains and not enough on uh, market forces. So a few words of context, then a few words about the particular time in our history where we currently find ourselves. So whether it's dams being blown up uh, in Ukraine or Martian skies in New York, uh, these are indeed extraordinary times. I'll talk a little bit about business and business unusual uh, in particular. And then I conclude by talking about exponential market forces, including technology, what I call green swans. And then right at the end, I'm going to use a phrase that we quite often use um, in our work, which is step up or get out of the way. So first, a few questions around, uh, maybe in your minds, about who I am and where I fit in. Um, I'm 73. Many people I know of my age are now retiring. I feel I'm only just beginning to get started. Uh, this year, I've worked 50 years, half a century, in the environmental and then sustainability space. Uh, during that time, I've set up uh, four uh, companies. They all still exist uh, since 1978. All businesses, uh, social businesses, as we would call them uh, nowadays. Uh, and I've served on over 80 boards or advisory boards from very large companies like Nestle to very small social enterprises, venture capital funds and so on. Uh, and I've written 20 books, just finished at 21st. And when I come later on to talk about Green Swans, this book that came out uh, through Fast Company Press in 2020 is what I will be referring uh, to. So if people know me at all, one of the things they know me for is the triple bottom line, people, planet, and profit. Uh, I introduced that back in 1994, um, and it's since become part of the B Corporation uh, philosophy and approach. Uh, but in 2018, I did the first ever product recall of the triple bottom line through the Harvard Business Review, first time it had ever been done, apparently. And the reason wasn't that I thought that the triple bottom line was a bad idea. Instead, I felt that it was being misinterpreted and very often uh, misused. The original message about the triple bottom line was that it was about system change. The cartoon, which I had uh, a cartoonist who worked still for the uh, Financial Times do for me back in 1991, just illustrates the work that we do, which is working with boards and top teams and major companies uh, in particular. And there are three voices around uh, the table in addition to the normal roles. So uh, a fish representing the natural world, a woman from the global south representing the social agenda, which is uh, opening out the whole time. And then a bit of a joke on the right-hand side, there was the robot. And that at that stage was just indicating the long-term future. But increasingly now, I, perha I, I perhaps think that that stands for big data, expert systems, artificial intelligence, uh, and so on. And as I said, the B Corporation movement has embraced the triple bottom line. There are now over 6,000 uh, B Corporations around the world. I, I imagine a number of them uh, represented in this room. So when we talk about responsible and positive businesses, that's the first place I would encourage people uh, to look. A couple of quick points around the times in which we find ourselves. Uh, this again was a, um, a Financial Times uh, cartoon, and I just put it up to make a very simple point. At a time when everything seems to be going horribly wrong, and I've mentioned some of the uh, current examples, I feel more optimistic than I have for about 50 years, and here's the reason. I think as a species, we tend to leave things much too late 
and then act at the uh, 11th hour. And that's exactly what I think in the, is in the process of beginning uh, to happen. And when I talked about 10 years ago to boards uh, and, and senior business leaders about exponential trajectories, they thought that was for Silicon Valley. They thought that was something for digital technologies, but not really something that affected them. I think the COVID-19 pandemic has reminded uh, all of us, not just business leaders, uh, that there are exponential factors at work in our world, uh, and they will increasingly push in on our sense uh, of reality, squeeze our sense uh, of reality. And one of those uh, exponential factors, I believe, is the way in which younger people are increasingly getting extremely concerned about cl the climate emergency, the biodiversity emergency, and so on. And if, as now seems inevitable, the world goes through the 1.5 degrees uh, level within the next few years, I think we're going to see a, a, a reaction among younger people, which we haven't seen really since the 1960s. So this is the world that the World Economic Forum now sees, and clearly it's a very complicated world. Uh, I, I was seven years on the faculty of the World Economic Forum, um, and I saw the early mapping uh, uh, of the system that we're all now part of uh, evolving. But what's changed now is there are many more factors at work, and they're all very, very much more interlinked uh, than they once would have been. With the climate emergency, for example, right at the heart uh, of all of this. And one of the responses that we now see business embracing is ESG, Environment, Social and Governance. Um, uh, approaches, and um, this was The Economist's response to that, basically saying we're seeing a stampede, as we often do, a feeding frenzy, with lots of people suddenly setting up investment funds with sort of ESG uh, labeling. We have to be very careful, and it's very striking at the moment to see the European Commission uh, removing ESG labeling from billions and billions of dollars worth of uh, funds. Then this sort of role of business, and particularly business as uh, unusual. That was a, a, a subtitle I used in a book uh, that I published in 1997 called Cannibals with Forks. And that, that book introduced the triple bottom line uh, for the first uh, time. Anita Roddick, who hopefully many of you will, will remember, who founded the Body Shop International, then used the term as a title for her uh, book. She was a friend and a, 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 and a colleague. And then more recently, if you're looking for examples of business as extremely unusual, then once again, Patagonia has demonstrated it has this extraordinary ability to uh, lead uh, with the appointment of the Earth uh, as its main uh, shareholder. Now, Mattel have just released a Barbie doll uh, of chief sustainability officers. Uh, and that some people will see that as a symbol that uh, companies are now embracing this agenda. And alongside uh, the chief sustainability officers, you have renewable energy uh, engineers, wildlife uh, experts, protesters, activists, and so on. So it, that, that's progress of some sort. But I don't think it's really what we should be talking about here today. Uh, a Spanish company that we've worked with in recent years is Acciona. Some of you will know them. Uh, one of the processes that we took 27 of their fast-track executives through was trying to work out what they were going to do beyond sustainability. And regeneration uh, was the theme of that uh, work. And at the end, uh, they embraced the title uh, Regenerative by Design. Now, I think that will take quite some time to work through. But I think that sort of language, that sort of linking, is incre increasingly important. So you've all seen this diagram, or versions of it, over the last sort of uh, eight, ten years or so. Uh, exponential trends are designed almost to take us by uh, surprise. Generally, they do. Um, and when people first saw the Model T Ford, they probably thought this was about as far as car technology was going to go. 
I've just been looking for a new car and, and, and looking at the Model Y, and people are looking at that sort of vehicle now and thinking that's as far as the technology is likely to go. All of these things, as we uh, are increasingly un, uh, aware, are now on these exponential uh, trajectories. And a very striking example, very relevant here in Spain, is the extraordinary uh, uh, fall in the costs of renewable energy and wind energy and battery uh, power uh, and so on. And that, for me, that market trend is very much uh, a green swan. As is the US Inflation Reduction Act, because what we're seeing there is enormous sums of money being spent in the United States with huge implications for Europe and other parts of the world. Everyone else now is scrambling uh, to catch up. So when people ask me, uh, can they be an individual green swan? My answer is no. These things are uh, trends in politics, in markets, in economics, uh, and so on. And I think the IRA, in that particular case, is a very good example of what we all need to do, which is step up or get out of the way. This was in the heart of um, a very big uh, insurance company, Aviva. Uh, and they're also very major uh, stock market investors. And up on the wall, we had the message uh, which I've already uh, mentioned. We weren't trying to be rude. We're just saying that very often people who embrace responsibility or sustainability, all these different terms, ESG, have a very incremental uh, understanding of what that agenda is about. They don't think about system, systemic change. They don't think about uh, breakdown or breakthrough um, outcomes. So my final slide is this one. Um, and it may be a surprising one, but it's, it's um, to make a very simple point, And it's a point with which I started today. And that is much of the debate about responsible business looks at individual companies. And increasingly, I believe, we've got to look at the markets in which those companies operate. Because it doesn't matter how much you clean up an individual company if you then put it back into polluted uh, waters. So I think let's continue with our work on responsible uh, business, but at the same time, let's think about uh, the market forces that we want uh, to deploy. So, muchas gracias. Thank you all very much for your uh, attention. Thank you.